Hey stencil fans, I am so excited to share with you today. Um, I'm going to show you how to paint this metallic um, burnished background and I'm going to share with you how to make it look rusty and then I'm doing some really cool things to show how to make a metallic thing on just a plain piece of wood. Wait till you see. All right, guys, I have so much to share with you today. Welcome to our Tuesday Lives. If you're catching us on YouTube, um, check us out on Facebook because we do this every Tuesday. We do it at noon and we do it again in a recast at nine and we answer your questions live. So today we're gonna start by prepping this board. I'm gonna use some really, really, really weird things to do this. So I've got this roll of mounting tape. I'm going to mark my board with a T-square. I'm gonna use this um, ghost writer is what we call it. It's a um, soapstone lead little marker that um, switches leads. There's a gray lead, a white lead, and a roller ball with no ink. And on the back side, there's an eraser, so you can take care of your mess. I'm gonna just put this off center, just a little bit, off my edge, and then I'm going to just get off of the roller ball with no ink, get to the white lead, and I'll just make a line. The nice thing about the soapstone is it erases with water, spit, varnish, everything. It will not stay on your surface, so it's a wonderful thing. Then we'll take our board and just kind of turn it sideways, and we take our tape. This is a double-sided mounting tape. Um, hardware store, we have affiliate links down below for Amazon. I line it up right on there. Okay, hold it down, and then don't stretch it too much because it does stretch. Okay, so you want to just be gentle with it, but it's very sticky. And I think I, I thought this was going to happen. I had to make three samples and my roll ran out. However, I can show you exactly what I did on a short piece because it's on all the other boards. So I would take it all the way down and I would cut it off right down there. And then you peel off the sticky red stuff. I tried to paint it with the red stuff on and it did not work. It's very, very paint resistant. And now I have a nice thick piece of, um, of the table now. We're gonna take coaster feet. These are the little things that you put on the bottoms of things so that they don't mar your surface. So you can, they just self stick on there and that's what they are. You could also use things from like the scrapbooking industry and stuff like that, play around with them. Um, we use, um, because we manufacture, we have a lot of coaster feet. So that's why I have a big sheet of them. I think I got those maybe in line, but we'll have an Amazon link down below. And one fell off. Okay, these are super sticky. So the way that I put my feet on there, is I put my T-square back on the inches part, and then I measured in one inch, and then just centered that piece. Then I put one at the one inch here, I put one in the middle, and then I used my measurement and did one there and there. Okay, so that's how we get those on there. And they're super sticky and they don't seem to come off. So that is wonderful. And I wanna tell you about our prizes that we have. So this is what this looks like. This is what this looks like painted, but actually I wanna show you painting on this because I think you need to see that. So we're gonna get out our black paint. We've got prizes for you guys. Um, we have a drawing for $30 if you share your projects on Facebook. And I'll show you the this little placeholder here. So um, this is just to tell you a grand prize drawing. So you can go shopping on us if you'll share things you've stenciled on our Facebook page. It's super exciting. And you get extra points if you've used our stencils. So if you go to Studio Air 12 Stencils um, and shop, then you can win prizes. Whoops, excuse me. All right, foam brush. This is a poly foam brush. It used to be a real foam brush snob um, because of brushes like this. And I wanna show you what the difference is. When I push with this foam brush, see how much bending I'm getting? I'm getting a lot of bend, okay? And I'm, I'm not pushing hard. You can see my hands now. I'm not like Ur, doing that. I'm just gently just bouncing down. This one, if I'm using the same pressure, I don't get any bouncing down. So it means that my brush is gonna be nice and firm. And I wanna show you why. <clears throat> so what happens is right here, if I take this brush apart, 
Just peel that thing apart. I love this part, so cool. All they have in there supporting this um, is a little piece of black plastic, okay? And you notice that the wood doesn't go inside of there. On this foam brush, we take this one apart, they have taken the time to have a much more substantial piece of plastic. I mean, you can see the difference, right? And then it also has that stick that goes all the way down in there. So that's why this is so much better. I wish I would have known that years and years ago because these are amazing to use for antiquing and distressing and all of that kind of stuff. Um, base coating, they clean up like a snap. Um, they're amazing brushes. I never knew that. Okay, let me show you how to, we just load some paint and then I'm gonna just run some paint along that edge and then run some paint along that edge. And then I'm gonna tap my paint around those buttons so that they're just fully based. And this piece of tape um, becomes unsticky, which is super cool. Um, once you base coat it, but it also needs two coats. So you, you're gonna come back and you're gonna do a second coat, but it works like a snap. Okay, so brush in the water. Make sure that's how you save your foam brushes is you make sure you put them in the water. Okay, and announcing, now that we've got that base coating done, announcing, announcing, our other prizes for people that like, share, and comment during this video are our dome brushes. They're back. Um, we, they go in, they come back, they go in, they come back. So when we're telling you they're back and we're doing all the exciting things, make sure that you go and get them while you can because they're, I think my big headache for the year 2021. Okay, so if you're watching this in 2022, hopefully that problem's been solved. So let's get started with this technique. I think this is the coolest technique and I kind of went crazy researching how to do all these metallic looks and stuff like that. So you're gonna be seeing some more of that. And if you look back here on the wall, let me, um, this project right here, we, um, we did that with a foam metal technique. And that is one of our projects on, I've got a posty note here um, for um, the garage one is STC, it was PRST because it's personalized. So that's one of the neat things that we do in our company is we can make you a personalized stencil. It's PRST 5833, great for dads. So great for grandpas, dads, all the uncles and all of that. So the metallic techniques I think are super amazing and that's a YouTube video so you can go find that on YouTube. So we're gonna use, I don't know if you can catch this Rusty, but right here we've got a few new guest brushes in our cool little plant holder turned into brush holder. Um, these guest brushes are called China Bristle Stipplers and they are super cheap and super amazing. You can use them to make snowy snowmen. You can use it to stipple. They're very, very loose. You would never use this to stencil with, but you can make snowy ground texture. You can do um, fur on animals and critters. And if you use a stencil and then stipple through the stencil, then you can make your whatever critter furry or fuzzy without having to keep it in the lines, if that makes sense. It's super neat technique. But today we're gonna to use it a little bit differently. I've got a pile of colors up here. This is kind of important, um, but they're not specific. So I'm using black, that's my background. I've got my black out. And then I'm going to start, my first color is, we're gonna sneak up on the, the highlight, if you will. My next color is gonna be really close to my black color. So that's brown. And then I sneak in this obnoxious um, olive green. Okay, these are acrylic paints. These are honey bottles. And um, the honey bottles are really difficult to find on um, Amazon, so you definitely wanna check our links out below. We spend a tremendous amount of time putting links down below, so, and we actually use up, I think, every single solitary thing they allow us to use up so that you guys can find things easily. So do check that resource out because it's very, very, I use it. I'll be like, hey, where do I order that thing from? And then I'll go and go use my own YouTube videos to find it. I actually do that. I painted um, leaves once. I've got a really awesome leaf technique and I needed to find out what brush I used. I went and watched it and then I'm like sitting there watching myself paint these leaves and it was pretty funny. But um, I use my own videos to learn as well. It's a good reminder. But we have a library uh, videos on YouTube that are, I think we have more than 100. We're marching quickly to 200. So back to our colors. We're using just acrylic paints. Um, we put them in smaller bottles because we buy them bulk. Um, but we're using this muddy green, a gold color. 
It could, as long as you're not too bright, um, this would be any color that you want. An orange that's just a nice medium darkish orange and then a medium gray. And then the stencil colors are the white and the cream. Um, and we are going to use a, um, da -da -da -da, put your glasses on. We're gonna use metallics. We're gonna use um, Dazzling Metallic and we're gonna use, um, the Folk Art is a Platinum and those are at the very end. So I'm just gonna put these down here. Okay, I hope you guys are excited. Tell us where you're from. I've been all talky, talky, talky here. Tell us where you're from and if you're excited to be here and then share with your friends. If you're in a painting group or something like that, make sure you share. We put a lot of energy into this and we do it for you. So you want to share these resources or at least we want you to. Okay, so we're gonna take our brush and it's gonna be very much like our stencil technique. We're gonna pick up our brown just on the very bottom of our brush. We don't wanna scoop and lift. We want to um, just have it on the bottom. So I just tap into it and that's all I did. And now just keeping it very still. So you notice I'm not making big swoopy things. I'm just kind of going round and round more than anything, just to save some paper towels. And then I'll move to a new spot. And really, I really, really, really have to have this all wiped off. Okay, so it's a kind of paper towel intensive project. Okay, once I get it kind of dusty like that, then I'm good. If you see any bristles escaping, that's just normal for a new brush. Um, they glue into the thing and, um, and the loose ones just don't get knocked out. They don't take the time to do that. Okay, so we're gonna take our brown and I'm gonna take my board. And I thought this is a little bit rough. Let me go ahead and give it a sand. Um, these are um, sanding blocks and this is, um, I think 150 grit sandpaper. Just wanna knock that back. I think I'm gonna fight it. All right, tell us what your weather's doing. I think that, um, we're in Ohio, so the weather does everything, sometimes all on the same day. And it's very pleasant here. Okay, so um, we're gonna go with this and we're going to just swirl. I'm barely touching this, okay? Uh, you can see I'm just leaving a little bit of a ghosty kind of a trail. This is gonna be a, a squinting exercise. You're gonna wanna squint your eyes. That is how I paint anything that needs to be loosely done is if you're looking at it with your like analytical brain, then you're gonna be like, I don't know, is it too much over here? Is it, should it be more over here? Is it balanced? When you squint, all you see is shapes and forms and that helps you just move through with some motion and that's really helpful. So I'm putting my glasses on to squint, that doesn't make sense. All right, so we squint at it. And you know, one thing that I think is gonna be biting me on the toe here is these scratchy lines are going to stick on there and they are going to show up under my swirls. My swirls are not taking those away. So I'm gonna dip into water with a paper towel. That's a very good piece of information. And then the scratches will disappear with the paper towel. So I don't know if you've ever, um, if you ever scratched your arm and then if you do that, the, the scratches will wipe away. It's the same technique. I don't do that as an adult. <laughs> and I may need to give this one more coat. That's not coming off all the way. I don't like that. So let's go into our black and make them disappear. I think I might have had a little scratchy bit on the bottom of my sandpaper. Hmm. I don't see anything. But this is one of the things um, that I personally love to do for you guys when we're out in painting land and video land is show you techniques and then sometimes, you know, things happen like this, I sanded first. On my sample board, I didn't sand until the end, um, but that I normally would sand it first, but then to know that it won't disappear with this technique is really good to know. So I like to share that stuff. Okay, so get that going. Okay, who's gone on vacation this year? Seems like everybody's gone on vacation this year. We have some kind of exciting news. 
we will be starting a stencil of the month club. How many of you would be interested in that? And what would you like to see in the club? So this has to be completely dry or this technique will pick up the wet of the thing. It's a very dry technique. Okay. And I'm still seeing Marks, what did I do to myself? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go backwards one step. Um, this, can you see these marks on here? I think when we look at our sample, okay, I'll bring this up. You can see just that there's no lines to make it seem um, like, I don't know, I think the metal burnished look is gonna be better if we don't have those lines. So we are going to go ahead. I'm gonna sand it all. And then we're going to one more time. Why, why, why? I wonder if my, let's take the sanding paper off of this thing. Ah All right, so this is completely lumpy and has dried stuff. Somebody's probably tried to sand with this with no sanding paper and got paint stuck on it. So this is going to go over here to get cleaned. And we're going to go into flat sandpaper, which is a pain. I find that it gets my hand kind of crampy. I really like my sanding block. On the um, heavier sanding grit, like on the 60 grit, that wouldn't be a problem. On the fine is where we're getting even scratchy lines where those lumps were. I'm glad we figured out this mystery together. It's like a whodunit show, right? And see how that's making nice even? I won't have to rebase after this. So that's good. Okay, you guys are still stuck over there. Sanding is my cardio, right? It's right here on this tumbler, which by the way, we do sell the, our tumblers with the art on them. Okay. Get all brushed off. And maybe right next to the edge. Yep, and then that side is a little bit. Sometimes when you paint, you get a little bit of raised grain. And I really paint grungy quite a bit, so I don't think I've paid attention to it too much. Okay, now we'll wipe off our crumbs off of here. This is our um, silicone sap, um, craft mat, and it is on Amazon. It's the affiliate link and it's amazing. We have them for all of our painting tables and um, cannot say enough about them. We're gonna go back and start again. I'm gonna pick up our brown paint. We're gonna wipe it all the way off. Get that over here, so. I am glad that we figured out what was causing that. Okay, now we're gonna come up here and use our squinty eyes these are brand new brushes, and you'll notice, um, I can show Rusty here on the camera, um, that when I swirl over this thing, it catches on all the right spots. And it starts our transition into like that magical kind of grungy, almost steampunk looking stuff. So you can see not very much color going on. It's very tone and tone, but we're setting the stage for the dream and the magic. And let me pull this guy up here so that you can kind of see where we're going with this. So I'm entering from stage left, which is like cartoons from way back in the 70s. Um, going stage left and moving my way through and kind of drifting and then letting it drift off. Then I'm going to start down here and let it drip, drift down and then over, and then kind of connect and fill in just a little bit. 
It's very random. This is the hardest part for most people that do um, anything loose like this is you feel like you have to have a, a place. I will tell you, I do this, I paint this like a dinner plate. My brown is gonna be about this wide. So it's about, you know, eight inches wide. And then I, when I pick up either like the orange or the gold or the green, whichever the next color sequence is, then I'm like, okay, this food is gonna be on this portion of my plate. And then my dessert is gonna be the top color or the very shiniest colors, the brightest ones. And that's gonna be the littlest amount, which might not always seem like real life for me. So our plate, our meal, our dessert. So you, brown needs to be wide, your next color is littler, and then your final color is your pinnacle, okay? So hopefully that helps you. Okay, so we'll continue with brown and very paper towel intensive. So I can't wait for you guys to work this through with, on your own. I think that you're gonna love this technique. Okay, so we we'll just make big, broad, wide swirlies, setting our stage, walking through the middle. Okay, so how early do you guys get ready for fall? When do you start, when, do, when does the porch get decorated? Is that the first thing that you do? I, like curious, tell, it, tell us in the chat. I cannot wait this year to decorate my porch for fall. Um, I got my door painted a bright yellow and it looks so pretty. And then my husband made me a flower uh, container, a big wood flower container, and it's bright yellow. So I think mums and things are gonna be gorgeous. Okay, we pick up more when we dry off. Cut. Try to use the whole paper towel because like this is a mess. Okay. Try it all off. When I did my project um, samples, okay, now we're gonna exit, enter in over here. When I did my project samples, they took about, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half, I think, to do the whole project from start to finish. Okay, so that, that's about how long. It seems like um, I got off to a little slow start here, but it seems as if um, it will take a long time, but it kind of builds pretty quickly. There's a big board here too. If you have texture, um, it's gonna do what this texture is doing over here. It's gonna pick up on the edges of things. So texture's not bad, but, um, but texture will pick up. And sometimes you can use that to your benefit. For instance, you can do a really cool background technique with um, like one of our pattern stencils. Um, we have so many pattern stencils. If you need texture in your life, get you a pattern stencil. Um, we've got ours organized in, here's a word. Words would be beautiful. Um, word stencils, we've got these in these um, disc binders and they just rip right off of there, but they're super sturdy. So you can just hold everything together and put like things with like things. It's a great organizing system. They stack really well and they pop right back in there. That's one of the affiliate links down below, one of the Amazon links, okay? But you can take your texture powder or your texture um, medium, go right through and put texture on there, let it dry. And then when you're dry brushing over the top of it, it'll pop up and it'll look like just the most beautiful background technique. It's wonderful to do. Okay, remember to like, share, and comment so that you can win the shopping spree and the brushes. Okay. So, I'm gonna do again, just a repeat again, just to strengthen. Like I said, it's a pretty big board. I love this metallic technique. I think that um, I can think of a million ways to use it. And, um, yeah, so I, I go around and do research for, what did I do with my brown paint? It's there, there we are. I go around and do the research as well, looking for just weird techniques and weird things. And I also, this, this one was a photo of something that had like an unrelated something. And I just looked at the background of the me metallic color and then just tried to figure out how to do it. but I, enjoy, I enjoyed figuring out process. All right, who thinks they're gonna be brave enough to try this? 
All right, see how that brown is building now? Now you can actually see it. So kind of big swirls, and then we just build it up, and then brush those. Next time when I do a video like this, I won't use a brand new one of these brushes. They are one of the brushes that I haven't used in a long time because I don't do like um, more total decorative projects anymore. Um, so there's something that's just, I used the, the used ones yesterday and I needed new ones. All right, we're going to pick up the next color. I think we're gonna do, um, let's do the burnt orange color. And I'm, notice I'm just doing a dirty brush. You only need, really only need one brush. As long as you don't go into black after one of these colors, it stays pretty good. All right, so now I wanna see where, and I've gotta keep this so light. This is really important. If, if your paint comes across as like a stipple where you've got texture, you have too much paint. So let me get a little bit more off of there. And then keeping with the dessert and the dinner plate, I'm not gonna do as big as swirls. So you can see that's starting to pick up quite a lot. Paintbrush is very dry. My pressure is very, very light. I love this technique. So a little bit later, I'm gonna show you how to, notice I'm getting my face kind of down here. Just wanna see the texture and I wanna see how, how it's releasing onto the surface. So I'm kind of like, you know, getting in there with it. We're gonna put some um, rust technique on there. Let me grab, I'm gonna grab the next color and then I'm gonna show you a really cool project. Um, everything that's on our wall right here is all videos that we have. Um, and then, let me see, what, let's go to the green next. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up the green, pick up a new paper towel. And notice that my orange is not making my green sad, okay? It's a slightly different color green and it kind of helps make everybody part of the family when you mix like that. So get that going. And now I'm gonna go in different places with the green. So I'm gonna go next to the brown, next to the orange, just around and around. Squint. You'll start seeing places that you wanna fix. Okay. And that's just a touch of that green. Not sure what it does, but it does something and I liked it. Okay, next I'm gonna go into the yellow. See how much faster this is going than you thought it would? And notice that the yellow is not arguing with the green that was in my brush either. I've wiped so much of the paint out, that's probably why. With the brighter colors, you wanna take a lot of time on that paper towel, okay? Make sure that if you guys are just joining us to like, share, and comment, because we're gonna give away the best darn stencil brushes in the world. We have two sets to give away. And we're recasting tonight at nine. If you missed the beginning, you can see how I messed up my board and how I fixed it. All right, so yellow goes on top of the orange and it's the dessert. And so it's not gonna be very much and it's gonna be very soft. Go over there, pick it up over top. And then as I'm working through, I'll push a little harder. And the goal is not to cover up the orange, the goal is to add to the brightness of it. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna, with my dirty brush, I'm gonna go into this gray. Flip that guy around. And once again, the paint colors are not arguing with each other. If I went straight into black and then tried to go back into yellow, it would not work. Okay. The gray is gonna add just a hint of blue. And I like it in the corners and in some of these little crevices. Really like it up in this corner over here. Makes it look so metallic right there. It's so cool looking. Okay, and then we'll travel a little bit. Get 
it over here in the corner. Notice I'm softening my corner and then back to swirls. I saw somebody do a metallic technique where they swirled but they used a medium to make a mix in and out. I love this dry brush technique because you don't have to work so hard and you're not waiting for a lot of things to dry. So I really think this is a good answer for um, this hammered iron kind of look, flame cured stuff. Okay, now we'll pick up, I could work this a little bit more if you can see the difference between the two. Well, this one's got metallics on it. So I've got way more orange there. My yellow's not as bright, but I do have gold to do next. So by looking at this, I can see the destination that I want to do. So I'm going to go back into orange before I do my golds. Oops, did I get the right one? No. I had to pull a fast one there. Okay. So pick up more orange. That one's dead. I don't know if there's a way, if you just flatten the paint on the paper towel on the palette, if you could just pick up a little bit. I'm thinking this thing through right now. I'll try it on the next color. Okay, so now we want to pick those colors up. Pop it. So there's a lot of trends right now um, in the world um, using metallics, um, stainless steel, um, all that chipped, rusty, all the things. Like organic things are very popular. Probably um, our lady in Texas um, doing all that farm, farm stuff. Um, Joanna Gaines, that's the one. I think that brought it into the common vernacular and now it's everywhere. And I love it. And I really love it when you can paint it and you don't have to buy it that way. You know, you can take a brand new stainless steel can, make a planter out of it, and you could do this technique on that and you wouldn't have to buy it from an antique store and pay all that extra money. I like, um, there's a saying that I ran across the other day that said, um, I do DIY, what's your superpower? And I think that that's just super fun. Okay. So much wiping off. All right, and then we'll pick up. Yeah, look at that. That's brightening up. Just needed more red. Orange. Did you know that um, when I was in Portland, Oregon is where we moved before we moved to Ohio, and um, I was looking for a, um, oh, I already have my metal out. Um, I was looking for a red wall behind my fireplace um, and I didn't know that brown could be a red. Um, and I thought that was really an interesting like epiphany for me. Um, your browns can be a green, your browns can be a red, can be an orange, um, on and on because um, brown has all the other colors in it. So depending on which way you lean with it. Um, so this orange is my red today. Okay. This is metallic on here. Now I'm gonna be very gentle with that. And I'm gonna put that up through the middle of the yellow. Over here. And so this is where I start kind of getting random. I'll add a tickle here and add a tickle there. Combine things. I can just glaze over. Metallics never base coat, so they're good glaze. So I can glaze over that silver and it's gonna make a whole different patina. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the silver, new paper towel. Okay, and we're gonna pick up the silver with the gold in the brush. And that's getting a little bit dirty right there. Um, you can see that it's not as bright as I would maybe want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload and rewipe off. And I call that toning my brush. Um, it allows the brush to release um, some of the color. Ooh, that got really nice. 
I'm really, really tickling, very soft. It's just like clouds fighting with each other or something. It's just a neat technique. All right, now that we've been through this for a couple minutes, how many people are gonna go home and try this? You can't really, you probably could do this on a box, but I think the texture of the box would be frustrating. I think you're gonna to need to do it on something flat. Do it on something small to start with. You really can't use the domes very much for that because they're not big enough. You need a big flat brush. So there is that. Um, I have this um, metallic ice blue that I used. Pull some of that out. I think I wanna just go ahead and mix that with my silver. So it's not too blue, like scary blue. Okay. Pick that up. Wiping, wiping, wiping. And then we'll blue in the corners. That little bit of blue glaze here and there just really makes everything pop. That little bit of shimmer, when you get the reflection just right, it's really, really neat. This is when I wish we had like smell-o-vision where you could get right on it and you could just see and feel and touch and get the reflection and stuff. Okay, I think that that's, see a little bit of stuff there. I think that's good, I'm gonna call that. Okay, brush in the water. And I wanna talk about rust for a second. Let's get this guy out here, because he's nice and dry. All right, so this project is like one of my all-time favorites because we, mixed sawdust in with our paint. And this one is STCL 837. And our stencils come in a bunch of sizes. So um, know that if you're like, I don't know if I want a really big project, it's probably available in something smaller. Okay, so, and I've done drop shadow on here through the stencil, um, and then see this rust. In this video, I show you, right at the beginning of the video, I show you how to create the rust powders or the uh, medium and I've mixed just three of these rust mediums. And these have been, I think, when that video was, I think it's been a year. Um, but these are the original ones that I mixed in there and I've done this project and this project, that project, like a lot of projects using the rust and it's not out and it's not dried up. So, success. All right. And then those of you who paint to sell, one of our number one sellers, this fire pit stencil, I could sell it a million times a day all over the world, all the time. It is number, number one, right at the top. Bees, fire pits, trucks. Those things sell all day long, all day long. Okay, we are going to, what are we going to do? We're gonna stencil, there you go. And then we're gonna rust, there it is. Okay, so this stencil has a border right here, and we're gonna move him over. And I don't want that there. So I'm gonna take him away. I'm gonna trim my stencil. Do not be afraid to trim your stencils. And then do not know, um, can somebody hand me a pen? We'll get our T square right there. Thank you so much. So you just need something to mark on your stencil. And T-squares are the best. Okay, and that looks like that did it. And then we're going to trim our stencil. Don't be afraid to cut on your stencils. Just be aware that if you cut it too close, you're gonna need to use your multi-masker. Like I'm very close to the edge right there. Um, Carrie, who you watch on our other videos, saw this off-centered project and we decided to do this one in an off-centered way. So it's not centered at all. 
So it's just butted all the way up against the wall there. Gonna center it. I did not like the hearts on this stencil, so I'm going to center it without the hearts. Here and here, use my T-square if I need to. So that's two inches and one inch. Hang on, I didn't do it to the letters. There we go. And a piece of tape. These are, how many of you have been to our website, studior12.com? Um, we have more than 5,000 titles of stencils um, in so many sizes, it's ridiculous. And it was taped in two places, one on each side. And then we're gonna get out our two colors. I'm gonna get rid of this palette. You see, I used way too much paint. I did not need all this paint. Um, so make sure when you're doing this, it feels like it's a big surface and it's gonna be long and hard and difficult and stuff, but it actually used very little paint and just a lot of paper towels. Okay, so I'm gonna get a new paper towel. These mats clean up really, really well. We um, spray them with the Zep cleaner. Um, it's the first cleaner I picked up. I'm sure there are other things that would work just fine. Um, and we use just a little piece of cello sponge and it, soak it for a second and it cleans right up. Okay, I think this project looks better if we don't do too light a color and not too strong. So I'm gonna do a dusty look. Get our brush and then pick up our cream and then pick up our white, mix them right there on our brush and then scrub it off just like we've been doing on everything else. Scrub, scrub, scrub. 15 times, excuse me. And when we come on our stencil, so the reason that I'm so excited about these brushes is because the brushes make it so you don't bleed under. So if you are somebody that has struggled with bleeding under your stencils, this is the number one, number one problem. And people will say like the stencil is broken, but it's because the way the brushes, um, actually this is like other brands of brushes. They're flat like that on the top. They're not as long. Um, but what happens when you push down, see how that splays right out? Can you get that rusty? Um, see how that splays out right there? Well, when you're putting that right in your stencil, it's going underneath the edge of your stencil. So that pushes it out. And then these guys right here do not splay, okay? so. They are balancing just on that tip right there and we scumble, not push. So if we were pushing, then it might do that, but we're not doing that. We're using light pressure and we're just, it's the brush is perfect for stenciling. Just a really, really good deal. All right, now that I've talked my brush dye, let's see if we've got any paint left on there. We wanna stay off of our metal paint, our metal, because if you get over here on this metal, you're gonna to have to rebuild from black. So know that I'm gonna get my multi-masker. And I think I've shared with you before, the girls that were at our painting boutique, um, at our retail shop here in Gallipolis, um, they, they taught you know, for the last couple of years, teaching people to use stencils and paint and stuff like that. And it's always so hard to stay out of the other color and the other thing and away from stuff. And when they got these multi-maskers, they cried. They, they were like, oh my God. And they were so overjoyed. It was, it was kind of dramatic. It was pretty funny. But that's how big a deal these are. These save your bacon all over the place. So I'm just gonna make sure that I keep that guarded right there. Um, and I did definitely talk my brush dry. Super good at that. And those of you who have the brushes, tell other people in the chat how you like them. Okay, so we're just gonna swirl. So no pressure on that at all. If you're a beginner, this is gonna seem really scary. The thing that you're gonna do wrong if you're a beginner is you're gonna to push too hard. So pick your, keep your brush balanced on its toe and very light pressure and just tickle, okay? I'm not putting any pressure down. And because I wanna keep it lighter, I really don't wanna spend a lot of time in the same place. Okay, peek. How many of you are peekers? I'm gonna peek under that stencil. Ooh. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna peek right down here. All right, I like that. I think that's the right amount of darkness. I could make it very dark, but I think that that just makes it look worn. So pop that back, pick up more paint. Okay, 
Okay, and the thing that you'll have to watch is when you have a fresh loaded paintbrush, it's easy to get it a little too dark. So be careful of that. Okay, this is, oh, look at that, fits right on that. Um, yeah, so we'll just get over there. When I did my sample, I did get a little bit on my edge and I had to go in and use some water and some stuff and it took off my metallic and it, like I was like, oh, you really need to use this masker. Okay, I'm done with the masker over there. We'll get it on there. Don't you love this kind of leaving that side of the board just empty? Okay, pull that off. And we're just about there. We'll do the grand reveal and then we'll be done. So make sure that you've liked, you shared, you've commented. Um, go check out our YouTube channel, ring the bell, subscribe. We give, we've had a lot of people be very, very shocked at how much content we give away for absolute free. So we, we care about you. We want you to know what you're doing so that you can have a DIY superpower too. Okay. Grand reveal, dun, dun, dun. Who needs to win those brushes? Okay, put that in there and you're ready. One, two, three, zoom. Lovely, I love it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you try it. I think that this is gonna be something that you guys are a little intimidated by, um, but it wasn't hard and it's, I mean, it's easy. It's just challenging to feel free to dance around your project with the brush, but it is a lot of fun. You guys have a great day. Thank you for joining us.